Hey there guys, it's Chad again, and today we're going to do a real quick review of the documentary put out by Amazon on the Amazon Prime Network uh, called Uncle Tom. It's a film uh, depicting the lives and evolution of thought processes of several prominent uh, black conservatives. I found it very interesting, uh, both in terms of framing and in terms of the concept of film, uh, the ideas that went into it, how it was set up, and in particular, how it was shot. I think I'm mostly going to focus today on the shooting style of the film in particular. It was shot in black and white. I believe this was done so that they could interpolate the civil rights and even prior to the civil rights era footage. A lot of very old footage in this, uh, old photographs, some of the people who were interviewed uh, gave their life story, the story that described the evolution of their thought processes and how they came to affiliate with the larger black conservative movement or simply with conservative politics as a whole. Now, there's a lot to get into um, as far as that goes in terms of the way that the politics are framed. This is uh, very clearly a piece of propaganda according to the classical definition that is a work which... Uh, aims to have its viewers be convinced of or uh, just provided more information on a particular stance. This, I believe, would be pro-black conservative propaganda or, at the very least, pro-openness to conservative thought propaganda. There is quite a lot of information on it uh, that is particularly relevant to America as, of course, this is a film detailing race relations within uh, the U.S., Uncle Tom is a novel written, or was originally a novel written by an American author to describe the situation black Americans were facing under the slave conditions, uh, the, the conditions of slavery in the American South at the time, and has since become a pejorative term used by, uh, by black Americans and by other groups against black Americans who are viewed as being servile uh, or in servitude towards white people or the white race as a whole, or simply who are betraying uh, their own social group, their own cultural group, that is, black Americans. The figures who are uh, slapped with the Uncle Tom pejorative in this film in particular are various movements of the growing black conservative movement in America, um, in particular those who uh, ascribe to the ideals of the Republican Party or those who support Donald Trump. There is significant uh, almost 100% overlap between the two groups, but they are, in essence, two distinct groups. There are some members of the cast who do not uh, immediately ascribe to being supporters of Donald Trump. They merely describe themselves as conservatives or Republicans, or even some of them just as conservatives and Christians, though the vast majority of the people featured in this documentary, uh, and according to statistics in real life, do do follow all three trends. They view themselves as Christian, conservative, and Republicans, and also as uh, supporters of Donald Trump uh, in most recent years. The interesting thing about this film, um, from the f firstly, is that in the beginning, the presidential or even political figure that gets the most attention is not Donald Trump, even though he is one of the most influential politicians of the uh, past decade. It's instead Barack Obama, a politician of an earlier era for the most part, who uh, would, would be considered possibly even more influential than Donald Trump. He was the first black president of the United States, and the vast majority of the conservative figures interviewed in this documentary were at one point uh, hardened Barack Obama supporters, particularly in 2008 during his first campaign. Many of them had switched over uh, by 2012 during his second campaign, though some of them stayed on board. And they all almost unanimously agreed that they viewed it as a good thing uh, at the time, and to some extent still do. They were big supporters of him breaking boundaries and uh, establishing new precedents for what black people could do in the country, even if they personally disagree with his politics. It's actually an interesting framing device because to introduce the section of the film where they focus on Barack Obama and his politics and his election and what that meant for society as a whole and in particular for black Americans, they use an example. Uh, they have a speaker, one of, the, one of the members of the black conservative movement who they interview, 
who compares Barack Obama to Jesus in a way. He says that white people had always been able to see themselves in Jesus. They had always been able to deify themselves and know that they could accomplish anything, view themselves almost as gods in their own lives. And Barack Obama, to some extent in his young life, took on that Jesus, that God as a man figure, uh, especially when it came to achieving things within the context of America as a black person. Him attaining the highest seat of power, a godlike position of power, which is how he describes it, those are his words, uh, is something that inspired him and instilled in him this t intense sense of devotion and also seeing himself in another figure. Uh, representation, I think, is the most proper term to use. The Obama section is almost immediately followed with a section in which various black conservatives describe situations which, in which they or their family members overcame uh, racism or perceived racism or perceived inability to uh, be less capable of attaining great things in America. There's a lot of focus on the concept of victimhood uh, in the film, which I think is very interesting in that they place the section on victimhood immediately following the section on Obama, the first black president, a person many of them had somewhat negative comments to uh, to discuss later in the video. They had negative views on him, but they did use his achievements as sort of a setup for the idea of uh, dodging victimhood and overcoming obstacles, which is one of the central themes of this documentary. It is framed in a way such that these individuals are portrayed as people who remove these shackles of victimhood and these uh, these ideas that they were unable to do something. They're sort of attaining a, an almost warrior-like status, the ability to strive forward and defeat these false ideas that have been implanted in their minds since a young age. And they're almost trying to encourage other people to do and think the same way. Uh, there's a lot of... A lot of things in this film that sort of frame that way. A lot of the interpolated civil rights footage, I believe, is also a a rhetorical tool that they are using to attempt to convey that idea. The idea that the black community has gathered together as a whole to overcome obstacles before, during the civil rights era. They banded together and they strive to defeat victimhood. And now they're saying there seems to be a sort of mental civil rights era. That's sort of how it's framed. Whereas people defeat these shackles that have been placed internally, which they've been taught and subconsciously integrated into their own mindset for how they navigate the world. But as I said at the outset, the most interesting part by far of this film was the choice to film the entire thing, including the modern day interviews in black and white. This is such an interesting choice cinematographically, a uh, directorial choice. I feel a lot more directors of documentaries or just even films in general should use. The bleaching of the colors really just adds a new layer to the film. The idea that everything is in black and white, which I think here is a perfect metaphor for the uh, this concept that they're trying to get you to escape black and white thinking. They feel, you know, the film director is trying to get across the message, the theme, that black people have been shackled to victimhood, that they are shackled to the ideas of the Democratic Party and of the liberal agenda in general, which my personal feelings aside, I think that was an excellent directorial choice to have the entire thing in black and white, both to reference the civil rights movement, a a something that they're trying to parody, it appears, uh, at the very least, with all of the way that they mix the footage in and the various references they make, but also just as an idea, the idea of black and white thinking, because the, the terms black and white, as soon as you say them uh, in the English language in particular, it, common, it conjures to mind an idiom, the idea that, oh, your things aren't all black and white. And this film very clearly is trying to... Uh, in trying to project the ideas of that idiom, the ideas that things aren't always so simple, that one group of people should not all think a certain way. And I think that was such a clever usage of color and just of a film choice, a directorial choice, a stylistic choice in really helping to deliver the message and theme the film is trying to get across. All right. So that's going to be it for today. Those are my thoughts on some of the choices and the themes of the film. I really do appreciate everybody who made it this far in and listened. I do hope you have a wonderful day. Please like, subscribe, and comment.